We're Lottie and Margaret, and after some pretty massive van build accomplishments and inventions behind us, we're finally moving to the interior of our camper van. For most people, that translates to wiring and insulation. But before we get there, we need to install our custom seats and a few awesome components to our extensive security system all while preparing our design for the most complex wiring job we've ever seen in any camper van. After all, not only will this thing be full of LEDs, a 3D printer, and camera displays, it's also responsible for charging our e-bikes and a mega 48 volt system with our own DIY 15 kilowatt battery as the centerpiece. Unfortunately, winter is upon us and making things a bit more complicated than usual. Ready, Millie? absolutely beautiful. This is a specific fabric that's supposed to be easy to clean and more resistant towards you know mechanical wear and tear. It cost us 5600 Czech crowns. Look at that neat job, I love it. These Czech tradesmen, they know what's up. We also added this extra pocket. This one was originally there and this one we added extra for different purposes. That's a nice storage. Now I can easily assemble them and put them together. First, the bag adjustable uh, wheel, no knob if you want to call it. Seemed to work pretty well, just needed a few adjustments, so I sanded it and this is the final solution. Adjusting the back on a seat, the wheel for it. We only had one, one seat, the other one was missing, so I was like, okay, I need to make it anyway, so why would I, wouldn't I do both of them? It's finally time to assemble these seats back together. I took the swivel mechanisms apart so I can grease them properly and bolt them together, make sure they spin nicely and fairly. The top and the bottom of the seat I took apart just for the upholstery guy to make a nice gesture and make his job much easier. Big benefit of this is that actually they are heated, so now I'm soldering wires so we can actually add a switch and have heating in them, that's amazing. This was, I think, Volkswagen Charan seats, completely different car and the, I love just fitting them and using different parts that were meant for a different purpose in our own car. These are the panels I spray painted, there's a, you can see there's a mistake, both of them are different shade of grey, but I didn't even mind, it just gives it a character because I'm using all the leftovers <laughs> that I have sp in a sprays. Assembling these seats after a few months after we finished the trip in the USA, <laughs> I had to take a time and I actually went back to our previous video and I had to see how I was taking them apart in the same way I applied, <laughs> putting them back together. This time we'd probably go for a little bit lighter color, I think the light gray is gonna be getting dirty, but hey, I'm happy with what we have, that looks pretty cool and it's time to assemble the seed base together as well.
I have a completely new level of appreciation for these new seats because the ones that we were using in the States we're kind of dealing with the same issue that we've been working to prevent, which is a very niche thing, which for Lottie, when he is sitting on those seats, he's way too tall. Look how high I sit. Look at that. This is so dangerous in a case of accident. I would probably break my neck. It freaks me out. <laughs> and when I want to appreciate a landscape, I need to be driving like this. And I have such a back pain in a few hours and they're more cumbersome to adjust with the swivels because some of these swivels add a lot of height. But with these new seats, we're being able to adjust up and down super rapidly, turn around super quickly. These are also our office chairs. So not only are we spending a lot of time driving in these seats, but we're spending a lot of time working in these seats. This is the main seating hub that we're gonna have. So having these things comfortable is vital. Now it's time to install them and I super hope they look okay and that the colors match and that it doesn't look dodgy or, or DIY or makeshift. Let's see. Yeah. Woo. Put it in, hide the swap and wire. We got it. That looks so cool. Do you like it? It'll be open most of the time. Yeah. Suspicious. <laughs> I feel great. These both have armrests. These have all the custom pockets we used last time a lot. These have swivels. I 3D printed this custom uh, backrest <laughs> adjustment wheel. So I printed it two times because one was missing. Subwoofer there, kitten cage there. And I think these are pretty comfortable. People talk about security, but they don't talk about it enough. Lottie is already deep in the installation process of one of our steps. If you aren't familiar with the 12 steps that we plan to implement in this van, I encourage you to watch our last video, which is a deep dive into how we are creating impenetrable ultimate camper van security system. But as we wait for our security cameras to arrive, along with the window film, Lottie is starting by installing the Thunderbolt locks for both the back door and the side door. Let's secure this thing. Wiring the Thunderbolts for the cab is a bit more complicated than the side and back doors. Unfortunately with our Fiat, it has a setting that when one cab door is opened from the inside, both are automatically unlocked. So we need to sort out a way to avoid that. Not all vans have this setting, it's just what we're working with. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. With one single control, with one single click, Walking away to a grocery store for 10 minutes, still having extra security. This is amazing locks and you guys no need to know about this because this is amazing system. The whole car is gonna lock like this. No pedal locks, nothing, not walking around every single door separately and locking it. 
just like this. Okay, that's the uh, first victory because I didn't have any collision in there in that gap. So now, first mechanical test if this padlock actually works. Okay, that's a good sign. <laughs> that is amazing. Nice. <laughs> that is amazing. I just want to have it on a remote control and because I see we only have two wires coming from the lock that's 50% chance that I'm gonna make it right at the first try. <laughs> Guess what? 50% chance actually was uh. So for you, if you have a Ducato jumper or boxer, purple wire to green wire, yellow wire with a blue wire, and you're very welcome. And now I have extra security. Lock. Mm. I just checked the weather and it says that it is going to be snowing this weekend. Have you ever tried building a camper van in the snow? I don't know if we need to come up with a temporary, temporary cover. I have no idea what we're going to do. I'm hoping that it doesn't snow and that the prediction is wrong. Fingers crossed, but we just got the GPS in the mail. So while we have some dry weather, we'll install the GPS. I'm stoked to see if this works. This is pretty cool. Super easy to install. It just goes to OBD connector. Look at that. Small little device. Pretty amazing. Immediately alarm that somebody pulled it out in my car. Immediately informing me. And it does show you the GPS location of the car. It shows you voltage of the battery and it has uh, parenting uh, options that you can see if your kid takes the car. If they're driving too aggressively or brake too aggressively. All of that notifies you, that's so cool. Car lock, that's called. Small little unit. Mm. Also comes with the extension, so I think I'm gonna run it a little bit higher so it has better signal. Just there. That's pretty cool that this OBD connector is universal uh, for cars since 1996, I think. So your car definitely has one. Maybe it's not even for a signal. Maybe it's just so it doesn't stick out. So maybe you can just zip tie it here and be done. Wow, that's cool. You can put it so deep in there now, actually.
falls outside You can hold me tight When it's cold Through the night We'll stay warm inside Lottie is now installing a Pro plate protection for our back door handle. This will make it so if a thief comes at us with a screwdriver, they cannot access our central locking system as the piece of metal will block them from getting there. Ah. This is incredible. This is incredible bad. How is this possible? It turned out so awful. Wow, and I keep making it worse than worse. <laughs> oh, that's why I did the masking tape. Why? What went wrong? Now that both the back and the side doors have their protection, it's time to install the Thunderbolt locks and the Pro Plate to the front doors. I definitely want to see how far the window goes before I install the <laughs> Such a big extra hardware in there. Wow, it looks like not much space actually at all. Mm. Beautiful. Explain what this is. That's something sticky. It sticks to this. The putty is from marking. It's a marker. It's a marker. It's a little marker. We like markers. <laughs> and nice. There it is. The magic spot. Where was it this? Was it there? I don't know. Don't do it unless you know. Hopefully. <laughs> no, don't drill holes into that car. It's never gonna be the same. You're right, never. Second plate coming in, that's all we need because it's only used where locks are and hopefully I'll do a little bit less messy job than last time. <laughs> Should be known that it's like 3.30 p.m. right now. Sunset is at 3.50 today. That looks really sleek. So let's make it dirty now. I just finished installing the pro plates. It's so easy. It's only four bolts holding each handle. So you just unbolt, replace. I do, did a bit of a glue so it, they, there's no water running behind it. And that's it, really easy. One bummer is I've been waiting for my security cameras and they haven't arrived yet. I really wanted to include it in this video because it's gonna be some 3D printing hosing and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Not there yet, so hopefully one of the following videos.
I love this car log app. I it's primarily uh, anti-theft device, so you have a um, GPS tracker in your car, and it's lo uh, plugged into your car, so you all the time see the log of all the drivings, and you can also take a look at the live location and the path the car was driving. It's also pretty cool, it has a battery lock. So I see as I'm driving back and forth, covering the car against the snow, uh, I know what my voltage is so I can be charging in a spare time. <laughs> wow, I'm excited to have this second, second row of security. <laughs> There's a big argument because these work on a primarily remote control switch from the car. And there's a big argument, how are you gonna get in when your battery is flat? Which is a great argument. So I'm still sorting that out, but most probably I'm gonna use 230 car battery charger that's gonna be sitting in my electronics box. And ideally I'll be able to turn it on and start charging from the 48 volt leisure battery. Mm -hmm. That would be really easy, that only draws few amps. And with that app, we can always keep track of the battery too, which is exactly. really nice. Exactly. If we can get in, if it doesn't unlock, I can check the app, see, oh, the battery is discharged. Turn the switch on, <laughs> start charging it from the leisure battery and be done. Honey, while I have you, will you tell people maybe hint to why we haven't been as active oh. in the videos recently this month? We've been working on a <laughs> massive side gig. It's a big project. We're gonna be publishing it soon, within a few months, and you can start looking for little hints what it can be. We leave Easter eggs in the background of the workshop every now and then, but now we're back to the van. That's what counts. That's what counts. That's what matters. I've been dealing with a spoiler for solar panels, and I have no idea. I definitely don't wanna be wasting my time and energy on a fiberglass. It's too much time making a, making a mold and then a layering it, epoxying it, sanding it, body kitting it, spray painting. That's too much work. So I'm thinking plastic or aluminum? That looks nice. Then this? Yeah. That looks like a mistake. That looks really lined, you know? Uh-huh. Aluminum would be fun, but it's kind of a lot of cutting. I already started making a template. So I don't know, let me guys uh, know what do you think would be the best idea. I know aluminum would be uh, sturdy forever. Plastic is a little bit trickier because I don't want it to be warping on the sun and it needs to withstand some of the higher speeds. So let me guys know what do you think. I think now it's time for wiring. For that to happen, we need to decide where every single outlet is going to be, where every single 12 volt outlet is going to be, where we keep our inverter, where we keep switches, cameras, router, everything pretty much. It's time to finalize the design so we know exactly where to keep those wires. strong believers that before you approach your build, you should have a strong sense of your final design. Lottie and I love tech and gadgets, which makes us much more power demanding than the average van lifer. For us, it makes van life feel like no sacrifice, meaning that it's much more sustainable for us long term. We need to make sure that we can both charge our laptops while sitting in the office, have outlets in the kitchen for our blender or a rice cooker or a panini press. We'll also have self-charging phone mounts in different locations throughout the vehicle. So none of the outlets you see us drawing here will be needed for our phones. We don't need too many USB ports either as we only really use those to charge our wristwatches or our wireless headphones. What might be a bit of a surprise to some of you is that we're doing a lot of built-in shelving. The shelving above the reclining couch is mostly for our everyday items and office and gadgets. We'll also have the same type of shelving units above our bed space. It won't look exactly like this, I promise. It will be much like sleeker looking, but this is conceptual. 
These will be built into the insulation, so they won't even be intruding the space very much. It's quite a cool idea that we're excited to get started on when we get to paneling after we deal with wiring and insulation. We've been making a lot of updates to this graphic and we'll continue to make more edits and updates throughout the build. I would like to take the opportunity and thank you so much for all the comments about last security video. We got a lot of great ideas from you, especially the kill switch for the main power source to turn a car on. Absolutely incorporating that in a security system. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next one when we are tackling wiring. Next video. Bye. If you've been watching our videos for a few months, you'll know that over the summer we fostered a small kitten and found a beautiful home for her with a small family in the village. A few nights ago, Lottie and I went for a walk and we passed their house and thought, maybe if we ring the bell to let us see her through a window, she had grown so much. When we fostered her, she spent a lot of time on my shoulder. It was kind of her special place to perch. And right when I picked her up after all these months apart, we felt very remembered. <laughs>